Today, I'm going to show you how to make a buckwheat boche. Let's get started. All right, so first of all, what is a buckwheat boche? Buckwheat is a type of honey that is, or a varietal of honey as we call it. And a boche is a mead that takes regular honey and caramelizes it or burns it or bochets it, whatever you want to call it. Essentially just heats it up. So this right here is that buckwheat varietal honey bochet or heated up to change the characters of that honey. When you do that, it alters the sugars, which in turn also alters the flavors and creates some non-fermentable sugars. So some of you probably already know that. Um, in this video, I'm not going to tell you everything you need to make a mead or anything. We're going to talk about this specific thing. If you want to know everything you need to make a mead, um, there is, I'll, I'll put a link down to a video or right up here for an how to, a how to make a mead in eight minutes video that will go take you through the whole process. Um, if you need to find equipment, find my store. It's down there as well. It's at manmademead.com. And then there's a equipment section where you can buy things. Those are Amazon affiliate links, yada, yada. This mead right here was started on a live stream. I wanted to chat with my viewers. And so what I did was I hopped on a live stream. I put about five pounds and six ounces of buckwheat honey into a, basically a pot and heated it up for one hour. It created this, um, this change of character and color for that honey. Uh, one cautionary thing, if you're making a boche, make sure you are not overboiling or not fully boiling because it boils up quite a bit. So we heated up that honey for an hour. We then took it, mixed it into about, well, well we took water up to two gallons to fill it up. And then we added, we used the Lalvin D47, which is a great wine yeast and overall mead yeast. Um, we also added Fermade K. I used one teaspoon and I put that teaspoon into, uh, basically after 24 hours in, I went ahead and added it because I am lazy. I could have done a staggered nutrient schedule or a Tosna schedule, but I didn't. Anyways, mix that stuff up, went through the primary fermentation. It came out of the primary fermentation and was, uh, kind of interesting. I think I had a taste test after it. So here's that taste test. Buckwheat is a weird honey. If you've never used it before, it's very wheat-y, hence the name, malty, roasty, like dark. And so it's a funky one. It's super strong too. So the amount of honey I used and this being all buckwheat means that it is very much so in your face. Uh, pretty interesting after the primary, I decided, hey, this probably needs to be back sweetened. Also, I can't believe I missed this. When I, after I mixed it up, I took a gravity reading, 1.080 starting gravity. After the primary, 1.008, fast forward back to where we were. Um, I stabilized the mead and I used potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. I'm not scared of them. I think they're fine. If you don't want to use them, you can pasteurize your mead, your mead. You can do some other option that isn't those things, but this was an easy way for me to stabilize without re-fermentation. Stabilized it, added eight ounces of just clover honey to this. Now you might ask why clover honey? Well, I added clover honey because more buckwheat would have been extremely overwhelming and I didn't want to have this be too overwhelming. Buckwheat honey would have been just so strong and overwhelming. It probably would not have worked. So we did clover honey. Our final gravity is 1.030. So let's go ahead and taste it and we tell you what it's like. Ooh, uh, it's about 75 days old, two and a half months old. Um, it's tempered down quite a bit. It was pretty hot previously. And also the uh, caramelizing boche has created some interesting flavors that are not normally there with buckwheat honey. I do enjoy the sweetness level. I don't normally kick things to 1030, but this needed it. Yeah, it's actually kind of got a nice roundness to it. Hmm. Ooh, and it's got some toffee notes that are coming through. A little bit of like coffee roastiness too. It's actually very complex. I'm a little surprised at how complex it is. I'm also a little surprised at how enjoyable it is. 
One of my big problems with this is I didn't do any tannin adjustment. Now you might ask yourself or ask the question, what is tannin? What does he mean by tannin? Tannin is the mouthfeel portion of a, a wine or a mead or a beer. It's that gripping feeling you get when you taste something or the lingering feeling. So the thing is this doesn't linger for too long. You get a little bit of tannic value coming from the honey because buckwheat honey, fascinatingly enough, um, has a lot of solids in it. If you ever use buckwheat honey, what you'll find is that at the bottom of your fermenter, you normally have yeast or some sed sediment of sort. You have a lot more with buckwheat and that's because it has a lot of solids that are a little bit tough to combat. So I would say that you need to prepare for that as you're going along. Uh, you'd be surprised how much you'll lose. Yeah, now, there's so much like caramel, coffee, toffee notes in this thing. It was actually pretty easy to make. The Beauchesne of the honey is really nice. What I've noticed with pretty much all my Beauchesnes though, except, except for this one, is that Beauchesnes, because that caramelizing changes the characters, it also requires more time for the honey and the meat itself to really round out. So this being two and a half months old and decently rounded is rather impressive. I do think the sweetness level helps with some of that, um, but you, I, yeah, it's, it's tough. I've never had something like this be so round so quickly. I, I like this a lot. It needs some tannic help, which means it probably needs more gripping mouthfeel coming from oak. Some, maybe some oak chips or some oak spirals or oak cubes. Hmm. You know, I thought I was going to be done with this brew, but I don't think I am. I am going to add some oak to this. I have a current tasting of it now. You've seen the process so far. We're gonna add some oak on top and come back and do another tasting and we'll finish it from there. I found it, I found it. I know what I'm putting in. We're gonna put in, these are rum barrel chips. Whoo I bet this is gonna be good. Um, this needs, this says two ounces for a five gallon batch, which means we need to divide that by four, five. We need 0.4 ounces of rum barrel chips. I mean, these smell super good. Ooh, oh man, I'm I'm pretty stoked for this. Holy crap, okay. We're putting rum barrel chips in. We're gonna go ahead and just put them in. I don't have a great way to do this, so don't yell at me. They're not like sanitized, but we got, oops, alcohol content to help us out. I lost a piece of rum barrel chip. Uh, let's go ahead and put these in. We're gonna taste test regularly. I'll come back when I feel like it's strong enough or it's at the level that I like. All right, we're back for what I think will be the final tasting. This has been sitting for three weeks with these chips in and I've been taste testing, of course, just to see at what point to pull them off. Let me tell you what it tastes like right now. This is one of the richest brews I've ever had. The buckwheat is not too overpowered. You can get a lot of honey forward character from clover honey and buckwheat. The rum um, barrel oak itself just adds some tannin, but it also adds a little bit of that rum, rum character. This thing is it's so complex and so good. It is very dessert-y. It's kind of like a stout. Um, I, I gave some to my wife a few minutes ago and she said, you know, this is basically the stout version of a uh, mead and I said yeah I mean it makes sense it's a, it's a, just rich and dark you wouldn't pour a huge glass of this but it is fantastic Ooh, I'm a huge fan of this if you don't like buckwheat you might not like this as much but the honey itself is super super interesting so good I definitely think you should make this recipe it's right up on the screen um, just, it is such a complex and weird recipe that works so well. I do think that it is essential to use buckwheat honey, obviously, and probably essential to use rum or whiskey barrel, uh, something in there to add them the deeper complexity. I would not recommend back sweetening with clover honey too much. That'd be way too much. So I would do buckwheat. Wait, that's a clover. <laughs> I would not recommend back sweetening with buckwheat honey. I want you to back sweeten with clover or wildflower or some other varietal. Said that backwards. So feel free to make this recipe if you'd like. It's fantastic. And I've, I love it 
I think I'm gonna make more of this. Um, the Beauchesne caramel side is super nice. I'm a big fan. The next step will be to rack this off of the oak chips. What I'll probably do actually is just rack and bottle straight from here. There's no more re-fermentation, so we're done. I don't need to show you how to bottle stuff. If you watched any of my stuff, you've seen me bottle something. If you wanna know how to bottle something, there are about a million videos out on YouTube on how to bottle mead, wine, beer, that stuff. So go check one of those out. I'm not gonna do that in this one. Make this recipe, do something fun with honey. Make something weird, because you'll never know how it turns out. This was a bit experimental, but I think it is perfect. So good. So thank you for watching. Hit the like, subscribe. Make sure that if you're watching these videos, hit that subscribe button. Not just if you want to, the subscribe button helps us grow. Um, I don't know at what point you're watching this video, but we're on the hunt, on the hunt, on the push for 30,000 subscribers. So every one of you that watches this and subscribes helps us get closer to that. So leave a like, comment. YouTube is kind of weird. And if you don't interact with videos, it doesn't push things. So if you wanna help the channel, you will subscribe and hit like and comment. So thank you for doing that. Check out my other stuff and have a great day. Cheers.